Welcome to another episode of Sub O Tours, where we're going to put our toys down and talk about some of the movies that we saw last year. Put and it down. Our first movie for this year. Happy New we Year! We are your hosts. Is this a game where Mug Papa? Wait, I want to see how long she was going to go. Yeah, I was going to ask if it was going to be a game. Like, who yep. can. Okay, never mind. Happy New Year! I don't know what's happening. <laughs> e, I win. <laughs> you cheated. Hi guys. Hi. I did not. Happy New Year. You did. Happy 2023. Happy New Year, everyone. It's another year. We survived 2022. And Barely. <laughs> Barely. At least we survived. <laughs> By the skin of our teeth. I know. Um, there apparently were more releases in 2022 than in 2021, which is understandable because of the global pandemic. People were opening up, people were returning to theaters, and this year looks to be an even bigger return for a lot of people. So hopefully we will see some of you guys in the cinema sometime soon. Yes, by the but way, if- that's Misha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's someone who works here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That, that's my. Oh, oh, oh. That was Anjo. Gulu. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been an interesting year um, besides our own little personal struggles. But yes, we are refreshed and re energized for an entirely new year and uh, excited for what's ahead. We're hopeful Mm -hmm. for better movies this year. But before we go on to our first movie for 2023, I have to ask, what did you guys watch in 2022? What were your high points and what were your low points? Can I start with my low point? Okay, sure. (laughs) Go Go for it. Sure. Why not? Uh, I don't know. I think you guys will agree with me. But probably one of the worst movies we've seen last year was... Black Adam. <laughs> oh, I had such high hopes for Black Adam. I know. I think it was the biggest, probably not the worst I've seen, but it was definitely the biggest letdown because of how much it was hyped by The Rock himself or DC fans in general. But it was just mostly because of the hype and because of all the news surrounding it and how mm-hmm. The Rock apparently worked so hard on it. And it just came out. He was hyping it for like 14 I'm, years. I, I'm, I'm trying to process everything that Mai was saying. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I came in to that movie with very low expectations. And yet that movie decided to go below my very, 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 very low expectations. And, and this is from the guy <laughs> who keeps defending the DC franchise. You guys know me. I, def- I defend the DC movies, but you know, but I, I really couldn't with this one. I was just probably too tired. With <laughs> you just gave up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, like you know, they have gems, you know, now and then, like the Suicide Squad. Not to be confused with Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad by James Gunn was pretty good. Shazam was also pretty good, and Wonder Woman. How can you forget Wonder Woman? But then you have Black Adam. <laughs> Such you a know, down. like. It was so boring. You know, it was boring. I expected it to be the most electrifying superhero movie from last year, but no, no, it was not. The lightning of Black Adam could not surpass the thunder of Thor. Wow. I shall see your Black Adam and raise you a Morbius. Oh my God. (laughs) Fair point. I did not, I did not even have the energy to watch Morbius. Oh my God! You you no, have to no. I, have I, to. I I decided not to watch that, but okay, fair fair point. When you watch a I movie think, like Morbius, you realize that it's either the director or all the actors. They have no friends. They had I, nobody I, I, on their side to tell them that maybe this is not a good idea. I, I don't know because you know it was pretty Morbius to me that it was a movie I shouldn't have seen. If you have a movie. If you have a movie where the central character is one of the most obs- or one of the more obscure villains of a superhero, then that's a warning sign already. And your movie doesn't even have that superhero in it. Yes. So th- I don't know. That was a warning sign. So I decided not to watch it. Eh, what are your thoughts about that movie, Mai? 
Uh, I didn't even try. <laughs> I'm sorry. See, as much See, as that's... I, I am a Jared Leto apologist to some degree, but it was just like no, <laughs> I'm not even like I can't, yeah. I can't, I can't keep defending you anymore, Jared Leto. But with and all, Matt with Smith all the is, news that's and coming Matt out, Matt Smith is hot again because of Game of Thrones. He's in that train wreck too with Jared Leto, but, and Matt Smith has a dance sequence that puts Tobey Maguire in Spider Man Three to shame. In terms of cringiness, or yes, okay, yes, <laughs> okay. Matt Smith had pretty great work in 2021 in Last Night in Soho, and then he had Game of Thrones in 2022. Big two years for he him. He had a great run as Doctor Who for like four or five years, and then yeah, I I don't know. Actually, he, I'll think about it now that you mention. If there's, I I can't even fathom a cringier dance moment than Tobey Maguire in Spider Man. So that I actually want to see. But, but you know, what's funny is he was with Karen Gillan for most of his years as Doctor Who and in Doctor Who. And, and, and he asked her advice about whether or not he should do Morbius because she's a veteran of all these superhero movies because she's Nebula in the MCU. And she said, yes, take it. So we have Karen Gillan to blame. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> but okay, Jesus I'll Christ. raise you Morbius. Hmm. And give you Jurassic World Dominion. Fold. I fold. <laughs> I'm really? done. Yep. Jurassic World Dominion. Fuck you. You make a movie about dinosaurs and you make the locusts the bad guy. Fuck that shit. <laughs> well, Fuck okay. that shit. No, I mean like, I, I still think Morbius is worse. Just because I talk to people, you know, who've seen it and they've enjoyed it. This isn't really a contest. I'm just saying okay. that it's, uh, it's like. Okay, okay. I'll give you that as well. Wherein but, the locusts just made us so goddamn angry. Like, where are the dinosaurs? <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I agreed. It's a movie about corporate, corporate espionage with bugs. I took my family to see Jurassic World Dominion in Canada. And they were so mad at me. Yeah, I was just about to ask you, weren't you, weren't you on vacation with your family in, in the West? <laughs> they were all so <laughs> mad at me. <laughs> uh, so you spent twenty dollars for a movie ticket. That basically you wasted twenty dollars for a movie ticket just to watch Bugs. Deng says, "I'm lucky they didn't disown me." I think I agree. I think we all agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Bug Enough movie. of the worst. Let's talk about the best of 2022. What did everything, you guys everywhere, think? all at once? Fuck yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm down with that. Okay, it's kind of hard to top that. That's not mm -hmm. fair. Can we just exclude <laughs> that? Because, you know, we know everybody loved that movie. Yeah. Come on. Uh, okay, fine. But look, fine. Mai took it. She, did, she took it first. Fine. That movie was great. You know, that rock that barely spoke in that movie was so much better than the rock that barely spoke in Black Adam. <laughs> I also loved, yes, Everything Everywhere All at Once was great. It was my live action turning red, which also came oh, out last yeah. year. And that also was also pretty red. great. Mm. That yeah. Was I think it was the one I emotion. Well, actually, both of them because yeah, they're, they're ah, mommy issues. I love you, mom, but yes, it's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mommy that's why, issues. Mother, well, that's why there's that meme issues. going around. There's that meme going around of Michelle Yeoh deserving an award for portraying an Asian mom who actually apologized for the yes. way she brought up her daughter. Yes, <sighs> that is good. There's acting. that absolute fiction. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> absolute. hard to believe. <laughs> But she made it believable. Mm -hmm. I know. Uh, Still more believable than those stupid locusts. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, like, okay, fine. I thoroughly enjoyed Bullet Train. Oh, damn. Oh, yeah. That Bullet was Train. an unexpected <laughs> surprise. Yeah. Like, I, uh, that, that, that movie was fun. That movie was really fun to watch. Yeah. Absolutely. Also. I couldn't, all the characters were so likable. All very well portrayed by their actors. Mm -hmm, and it was clear mm -hmm. that they all had fun doing it. Yep. I couldn't even pick who my favorite was. Maybe the water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot Maybe. look at a bottle of Fiji water the same way ever I, again. It, it, it kind of sucks that I wasn't able to watch that movie with you guys. Ooh. It was brilliant. It was absolutely yeah. brilliant. And every twist was earned. Every kill was gloriously bloody. And the cameos were some of the most fun I've seen in ages. I mean, that's definitely the best use of Channing Tatum and Ryan Reynolds in years. <laughs> and Sandra Bullock. Yep, yep. 
all for good, what all good. for what a good five minutes less mm-hmm. two, two minutes maybe <laughs> I, I I honestly wish that more people had seen Bullet Train people are only discovering it now because it's on HBO Max and HBO Go or yeah. Netflix depending where you're watching um, that, that movie deserves more love it, it really like, does it but really does. I Part of it, part of the reason it didn't do so well is because people were still on their Top Gun Maverick high, and I can't oh, entirely yes. blame them. Yeah, I cannot I blame them. Oh, yes, it's so fun. that was amazing. Yes. That think, actually okay. surprised me at how good it actually was. Same so here. You, you have the best high concept movie, and then you have the best blockbuster movie, and then maybe Bullet Train in the middle of those two. I think we have three really great movies. Good stuff. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. And oh my God. So, um. No, I don't think much else needs to be said about Top Gun Maverick. But another film that surprised the hell out of me was Triangle of Sadness. That was just fantastic, honestly. Great, great year for Dolly De Leon also. She is killing mm-hmm. it all at, at all the award shows. This is an unironic Pinoy Pride moment. Not like when mm-hmm. we lose in Miss Universe, but then still claim the winner to still have like an itty bitty ounce of Pinoy blood. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, guys. Can you just let it go? No, she was, like, it, it, uh, she's not even using her Filipino name, okay? <laughs> Sorry. There's a reason why she's not representing the Philippines. Exactly. Guys. So stop, so stop claiming Pride. it. Stop Relax. claiming it as a win. Relax. Relax. But like Super Dolly De Leon Relax. literally just giving us a good reason to be proud. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. She absolutely she just mm. Owns that movie, and I think more people should see Triangle of Sadness. It's a wonderful indictment of the rich and privileged and entitled people um, who basically step on everyone else, act like everyone is beneath them, everyone else is invisible, and only exists to serve them. And De Leon just she just fucking slays, and it's just hilarious. I saw it with the perfect crowd. We were at the 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 the, the premiere. At the Quezon City International Film Festival, and it just brought the house down. It was the perfect, perfect audience to welcome Ooh. that film into the country. Bring the house down. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, I think that's a good sum of like high and low points for 2022, and hopefully we have a better selection. For 2023. I'm sure there are going to be bad movies too. But hopefully not as bad as what we saw this year. <laughs> Let us know what you think. If you'd rather have us stare down a bad movie or have us review good movies. Or we can do both. But which do you guys like more? Yeah. Or if you want to see Morbius 2 for some reason. There's a Morbius 2. If you want them to make a Morbius 2 for some reason. Morbiously, I won't watch it. I'm a dad. No. I can do dad jokes. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, you just keep telling uh, yourself that. Okay. I'm owning it. <laughs> okay, so 2022, that's all in the past. Let's leave it there. Maybe you can rewatch some of your faves, but let's focus on 2023. Um, basically, today we're not really going to talk about just one film. We are Talking about what we can look forward to this 2023. What are going to be the new releases? What do you want to see? What do you not want to see? We're just going to give you a little rundown on stuff. So, yeah. (laughs) Woohoo! Okay, so what are you guys looking forward to? I think we can do a quick rundown of like all the superhero movies that are coming out. So we can get that out of the way. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. I think top of the list would be the first entry into Marvel's Phase 5, which is Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Um, I have no idea where they're going to go with it, but hopefully it'll explain what the hodgepodge chop suey that we got for Phase 4 was. Yeah, Phase 4 was... Phase four was a- phase- is 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 okay it's a strange mess of potluck like oh let's bring it let's have a party bring whatever dish and then the themes don't match i know and then the ones that could have been linked somehow had nothing to do with each other like loki talked about multiverses but they had nothing to do with the multiverses in what if which had nothing to do with the multiverses in one division which had nothing to do with the multiverses in 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 um no way Spider-Man home. No Way Home which had nothing to do with the multiverses in um Multiverse of Madness the mo- one mm. movie that actually had multiverse in the title 
actually turned out to be a sequel to WandaVision and did nothing to clarify anything. At least with Marvel phases two and three, we knew Thanos was coming. We knew we were looking forward to something so we could more or less forgive the weaker entries of which there are more than I remember because Deng's been rewatching all of them and holy crap, some of this stuff didn't hold up as well as I thought it would. But, you know, at least it felt like a con a congruous whole. Mm -hmm. This does not. Phase 4 did not feel like a whole. And if you look, it's just because they have so many entries, including the TV shows. So I think whatever intention they had got watered down. Things got left by the wayside. It was just, it was just all over the place. I, I, so, think, I, think, I think the TV shows were kind of responsible for the mess that is Phase 4. Just mm -hmm. because there's just so much information that you have to take in, mm -hmm. and that it, there's a clear lack of focus by both I Marvel guess. and then I maybe guess. and then then it just leaves the audiences distracted as to what's really going on. Because you know, I don't even think Thor: Love and Thunder is connected. I don't even know how I could connect that movie into this whole quantum. I don't know this whole multiversal thing because it didn't really do anything. Or have anything to do with the multiverse in question? And, well, for, and the me, for, for me personally, there are like pros and cons to not having everything so interconnected because there will be some people who will not be watching this chronologically oh. or <coughs> will be um, true. coming yeah. in probably blind. That, that's, that's, that's a that's good thing about it. But you still have to have that element of unison, which it yeah. really did not. One way to look at it also I guess go uh, building uh, building on what Mai just mentioned is that maybe we should just let go of the fact that there really that you know like there really isn't a threat a unifying threat for the Marvel Universe that everybody could clearly see the way that the superheroes don't see any reason for the Avengers to be together at this point so they're all dealing with their own shit not knowing that there's something brewing in the background which eventually hopefully Quantumania <coughs> Will bring into the table. No, but that's the weird thing, isn't it? That now freaking Ant Man, one of the lesser heroes, is the one who's going to carry us into the next phase and introduce Wait. the next big bad for the next Wait. three, four years. Which because is what look, what Mai said earlier, yes, it's a kind of a good thing that there there should be entries you can go into with zero knowledge, especially for something that has 12, 15 years of continuity at this point. Anybody but, got time for that? But yeah, that's one <laughs> thing. And the other thing is how do you? How are you supposed to know what counts and what doesn't, right? Like nobody going into fucking Doctor Strange knew it was going to be a Wandavision sequel. I know a lot of people who were confused because they had no idea what was going on. If you didn't watch Wandavision, you'd have no idea that you, why she'd even want kids. Mm -hmm. That's true. That is very true. So there's just but, too many things to keep track of. If yeah. Keep it to the movies. Keep it to the movies. If you're going to do the shows, let them do their own thing. Mm -hmm. But. In trying to tie everything together, they managed to make everything seem less important. I don't know. There's just too much of it now. But I don't know. Maybe Ant-Man will be the shot in the arm that they need to bring I, everything back into focus. I, I, I don't know. I'm hoping for that because Ant, the Ant-Man movies have always exceeded my expectations, especially the first mm. one. I know the second one objectively isn't that great as a movie, mm -hmm. but it thoroughly entertained me. Just it, was because a, it, it was a palate cleanser, you know? It, it, yeah. Coming in between um, Infinity War and Endgame, mm -hmm. I guess. Like the first and, one was a great heist movie. The second one was just like a Paul Rudd show. <laughs> okay, I'm but, not complaining you know. though. Yeah, but, but I'm yeah. not complaining. I love Paul Rudd. He's the, one of the most likable actors. And we got we get him for for the third season of Only Murders in the House. But I digress. Going back to In Ant the Man. building. <laughs> building, not uh, house. It, it, Building, houses, whatever. In New York, house? a house? building is a house. House? house? Yeah. <laughs> Only house. murders in the house. Okay, Andrew's new show. Uh, Lovely. Okay, um, so moving on from Ant-Man. I'm personally really looking forward to the Marvels. Because yes. uh, a lot of people understandably did not like Captain Marvel very much and mm -hmm. may, maybe Brie Larson. But that's I, I am hoping this will be the redeeming film for both Brie Larson and Captain Marvel's franchise. Because uh, uh, honestly, I, I just love Captain Marvel as a character. And mm -hmm. I would defend it to the death. Um, she's such a complex character that I feel is also misunderstood. Maybe Brie Larson was misdirected at some point as well because she's an amazing actress. But this being directed by Nia DaCosta is really 
promising. Mm-hmm. So I Absolutely. really, really hope I, they give her more depth, more, um, uh, let's say, range, I guess. Not just like the stoic I, Captain Marvel that we got in the first I, movie. I completely agree. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the movie. I like the character as a comic book fan. And she is a, compl- a very complex character. And she's gone through so much, especially mm-hmm. now. Present, the present character in the comic books. But it did not reflect in the movie, yeah. which is a big deal. The one mm-hmm. other thing that's exciting me for the Marvels, it's funny, the Marvels, the sequel, not the universe, is that it's directed by Nia DaCosta. Yes. Nia mm-hmm. DaCosta, who, uh, who, um, Nia DaCosta, who directed, um, Candyman reboot. Which yes. was a, which was great because it tackled so much great storytelling. Say two more times. No more. I'm scared. I'm alone. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's at night. You know, great storytelling. They raised a lot of socially relevant issues, but it wasn't so mm-hmm. on the nose. Mm-hmm. It was really creative, and it was a great way to relaunch a franchise. So yes. I'm excited for how Nia the is going to tackle this big budget, very visually, you know, I guess compelling mm-hmm. move type of movie because it's it's a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. So it's going to be interesting. I, I'm hoping that because they're tying up with the TV show Miss Marvel, which was a fantastic surprise. Um, I told you. I'm great hoping, move, great show. I'm hoping that having somebody to bounce off of who's not Samuel L. Jackson will give Brie Larson um, more, more of a canvas to play with because she was just straight up stoic in her first movie not as stoic as The Rock (laughs) not as stoic as Black Adam oh thank god bland um, bland Adam but um, (laughs) yeah Um, I I, I, I am a fan of the character and I also hope that um, it it gives us something good to look forward to yeah give it to us girl speaking of somebody bouncing off of Brie Larson and you mentioned Miss Marvel, <coughs> the series, Iman oh, Villani, that, that teenage girl, is, is so lovable. So I'm excited to see her alongside Brie Larson. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the Marvels will be coming out in July. Oh, by my birthday! <gasps> birthday gift to <laughs> <ko sa akin laughs> Brie Larson, please. Galingan good job. Good job. <laughs> but uh, we can watch it together for your birthday. We can Aww. treat you. Oh, yay! Will you give me Brie Larson? Oh, good lord. A, mov- a movie ticket. Okay. <laughs> Not, I, Brie Larson is just too tall in order for us. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> also, um, oh. happening in May, there's going to be Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which is reportedly the last entry in this franchise of the Marvel Universe. According to um, James Gunn, this is going to be his last volume. And apparently, Dave Bautista has also said it's the last time he's going to play Drax. The trailer looks like there's going to be lots of drama. People are already taking bets on who's going to die, who's going to come out of this. And um, as far as we know, Gamora still has no idea who Star-Lord is. So this should be interesting. Why is Gamora? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, I just had Son to. Of I'm a... sorry. <laughs> what? It, no, it, no, no. That was, that was good. What? That was good. That was good. That, I'm going to give it to him. That yeah. was pretty good. Okay. That was okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Know, good joke. Okay. Good for Yay. you. Good for you. Good dad joke. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, then um, on, on the DC side of things, of course. Shazam! Um, Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we know. Okay. Let's yeah. start off with Shazam because we okay. know that my he's okay. going to be. Yep. My has her reasons and we know what those reasons are. Okay. Okay. We know who <laughs> their reason go. is. Shazam is coming out sometime in March, ladies Lucy and gentlemen. Lou. Oh yeah, Lucy Lou in it. And Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren! And kids who are actually uh, Not growing kids anymore. up too fast. Yes, adolescents. <laughs> adolescents is catching up to them way too fast. I don't know. Blame the pandemic. They couldn't shoot in 2020. I know. When they could. Why not? Uh, Billy seen- Batson's voice is cracking, for sure. <laughs> if you see the trailer, it's like, huh. Okay. And everybody's older. Everybody's taller. They got the whole Stranger Things going on. I they know. got the whole Stranger Things, things, things thing going on. Stranger Things thing. So, okay, it's okay. like the yes. growth spurt, I swear. And <laughs> I mean, Billy Batson, uh, the actor who plays him, is almost as tall as Zachary Levi now. So it's like, it's not even going to be like that big of a change. I, and I think mm. the character of Mary 
when she transforms into her Shazam form is even the same person that is. She just changes her costume yep. basically yeah, exactly. at this point. To get you, to give you guys an idea, you know, Grace Fulton, the actress who plays Mary Marvel, is actually married now. Just got married during the pandemic. Or 2021, was it? So, well, her... I guess. <laughs> yeah, Gang so... just pointed out to me that um, the kids in this movie aging up, whether it's because of the pandemic or what have you, um, you saw the exact same thing in A Quiet Place 2 where the kids just grew like a whole foot when the movie supposedly started right after the ending of the first one. Mm-hmm. And this year, actually, towards the fourth quarter, we're actually getting A Quiet Place 3, which by this point, they should be freaking teenagers, I swear. Yeah. Yeah. They shouldn't like pretend just... anymore that they're kids. It's like, just yeah. like, oh. hmm. Wait, so wait, uh, three, three, does Emily, wait, Emily Blunt's still there? Yeah. So okay, it's so, like and then, quiet, okay, a quieter place. Like, I don't know. Quiet, quiet. They, so so quietest. the sequel is so, yeah, quieter, quietest. Not also <laughs> since quiet the place, a quieter, and the quietest. Okay, the good. quieting. <laughs> this I time think. it's personal. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Well, uh, well 20, still high 20. hopes though. I mean, I mean that, that cast alone, having Lucy Liu and Helen Mirren, I mean, that's that's enough to get you really excited. I guess. But I think Helen Mirren has reached the Robert De Niro stage of her career. Where she will just say yes to anything that looks fun, regardless of the quality. Yeah, yeah, she don't give Helen a shit Mirren. anymore. I she's think she's Helen done, Mirren. what, three Fast and the Furious movies at this point? She Yeah, I mean, like, she's done Red 1 and... Red, no, sorry, not Red. Red, Red 2. Like, a couple mm-hmm. of Fast and Furious movies also. Yeah, Those movies yeah. weren't meant to be taken seriously. Mm-hmm. They were clearly meant for fun, and she was having fun in them, especially I in the fast guess. movies. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you have cars that are going to be blasting off into space, would you take that movie seriously? Hell no. no. I know. That's why I hate cars too. Uh, well, cars too is a different story. <laughs> I guess. Speaking of sequels, as oh, as has been the trend of the last few years, we have a buttload of sequels coming up. Sequels, remakes, you Aquaman! Name it. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Aquaman 2, Jason Momoa! Yes. Aquaman 2 na. Oh, oh my no. god. Oh but- my god, I'm just on the roll. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to the fish. Uh-uh. Yeah. Uh-uh. Okay, yeah, but Jason Momoa again. <laughs> and um, joining the cast, actually, which is exciting, um, Yaya Abdul Mateen. Mm-hmm. We'll be Again. joining the cast. Returning. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And Returning I, I, I as... love, I love, I love, I love him so much. So As African-American Manta. Yes. And uh, this is coming out in December. So <laughs> still a long wait, but I... Merry Christmas! <laughs> Gift just happened to Jason Momoa. <laughs> wait a minute. If it comes out at Christmas, then we're screwed. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, we get to see that 2024 because, you know... MMFF fine. MMFF takes the over. Metro Manila International Film Fest. Okay, it's fine. MMIF. <laughs> is there still international in the name? Because we're not fooling anybody at this point, really. How is yeah. it international? Um, at some point they premiered Ben Hur, if I remember. Mm. Charlton Heston was here. Uh, no, it's not an international film fest if most of it will be coming from Star Cinema, Viva Cinema, and what other local cinemas we have. I mean, yeah, okay. Fine. What else we got coming out sequel-wise? We have Flash. Streams. Oh, oh, that's not a sequel. Flash. The Flash. Right, oh, wait. right, right. I'm, I'm still like curious about the whole Ezra Miller situation. Ezra Miller is a situation. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> I mean, like, The Flash, you know, Warner Brothers clearly has a lot of dysfunction that's been happening with its cast. Of actors for the DC universe. Mm-hmm. We've, we've lost a queen of the oceans mm-hmm. because of some, some yeah, like it's for it's a different episode altogether, not for us to talk about. And then we have Ezra Miller, who has been dealing with a lot of disciplinary issues. Well, so he's kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Kind of crazy is a nice way of putting it. Okay, yeah. fine. What's the right way to say it? He's um, he has mental issues. There we go. Mental health 
issues with that me. has have yeah. had that has seen him attacking random people in random places you know Bre- crashing break- karaoke breaking breaking parties into, and breaking throwing houses, chairs right? at people oh, yeah. yeah also um some alleged alleged uh substance grooming abuse. Mm-hmm. substance oh, abuse and, and yeah also oh. that <laughs> yep. yeah uh, well okay so, but apparently his Flash movie is the one that's going to tie a ribbon or was originally intended to tie a ribbon on the DC Extended Universe before James Gunn took over in the wake of the Warner Brothers corporate shakeup. And this is the movie that was going to inter- introduce the multiverse concept to the DC Universe. They were going to bring back Michael Keaton as Batman and Ben Affleck as Batman and do all sorts of fun easter egg things that would pick uh, let the producers pick and choose which parts of the DCEU would stay and which ones would be pushed in a new direction but since James Gunn came in <laughs> apparently the entire DC universe is getting a reboot so we don't know if the flash movie is going to be an introduction to a new age or the end of the existing one yes i'm going to miss henry cavill well, he's he, not he, going anywhere. Yeah, he has as other Superman. shows. As Superman, as Superman. yeah, yeah Superman, that's okay. sad. Mm-hmm. As long as he doesn't have that CGI mustache. <laughs> CGI mustache removed. I yeah. know. But as long as we are going to be talking about DC movies, um, I believe there's also Blue Beetle that's out this year. I am actually curious about that. I, that's coming out in August. And I... Don't know anything about it other than it's going to be about the Latino Blue Beetle. Help me out here. Yeah, the the se- what? So, sorry, the newest Blue Beetle who took over the mantle because this Blue Beetle is supposedly like alien tech armor, basically mm-hmm. like an Iron Man, but he's a teenager. The original Blue Beetle was more like Batman. So this is going to be interesting because he's pretty obscure. Not a lot of people know who Blue Beetle is, but I if have you've no seen, fucking idea, right? See, <laughs> so but if you've seen this, if you've, you've seen the the behind the scenes photos of the suit, it actually looks comic book accurate. If you Google uh. what he looks like, so it's pretty interesting, and it's the kid from mm. Cobra Kai. Yeah, but I think we already have our quote of sarcastic teenage bug themed superheroes. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, that's the only problem. Also, my issue with this Blue Beetle movie is that it was, it was produced, it was greenlit in the wake of the DCEU executives or the Warner Brothers executives trying to scramble for titles to take over the universe following the you know following Henry Cavill's and Ben Affleck's initial exit from the universe. So I have a lot of doubts. Like the, it's like the canceled Batgirl movie. Oh, that was. Let's sad. see how this goes. I guess. We'll yeah, that was tragic. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the only okay. the last superhero movie that I can that I can uh, mention of note. Um, I don't know how excited you are to see this, but it's from the people who brought us Morbius and Venom. I it's, know what you're talking about. Can I say it? <laughs> coming in October, it's Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. No, fuck you. It's Craven the Hunter. What are you talking about? Oh fuck no. Yeah. I was like, I was, I I had like really low expectations, but I was like, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to Spider Man across the Spider Verse. No joke. I know. I am also looking forward to Into the Spider Verse, but no one on Earth is looking forward to Craven the Hunter. I mean, sorry, across the Spider Verse. Into was the first one. Across the Spider Verse. No, because so, no, because I just assumed Sony, so. Yes, yeah. but Craven the Hunter. You see, you see how who, bad that was? Because I totally forgot that they were producing Craven. It's okay. I'm sure the people in the Craven movie don't even know they're making Craven. <laughs> it's starring okay. Aaron Taylor Johnson, who gets to put Ooh. on another wacky accent Ooh. after, after so, Bullet Train. So, and guess what? He's also got a mustache in this one. So, <laughs> if you want to watch this, you know, together, my Yep. So basically, you're gonna have to pay for our tickets. <laughs> oh my Why? god! No, no, no. Okay, Why? she's gonna want to see it because Craven in the comics is a stereotypical big game hunter who injects himself with some tribe's magic potion that gives him the power of animals, so he can hunt down animals with his bare hands. <laughs> and the most powerful <laughs> animal he wants to hunt down is Spider-Man. But since Sony 
can't really use any live action Spider-Man. I have no idea what the hell he's going to be hunting in his movie. Venom. But you, but I think you're going to like his costume. He basically wears Mufasa's face on his shoulders and yeah. he's got a bare chest. Mm. He wears tights for pants and he wears ballet slippers. And that's I, how he runs around chasing Spider-Man. I, I, I don't know how that's going to translate in live action. Sometimes he has a spear, but he always has a mustache. Yes, he does. <laughs> like the, but, the range of expressions my face I, just went to. Okay. <laughs> I'm as so as confused. A, He's like wearing I, a vest made of Mufasa. I honestly <laughs> do not know how they're going to pull this off. Because, you know… Me neither. They, I mean, because Craven is a freaking badass in the comic books. But he only works if he's against Spider-Man. Yeah, so but I, he also has that stupid Eastern European accent. That like he so, like made up ad. like quick, Sokovian. Quick, he can do that exactly. So <laughs> okay, maybe that's worth watching then. I I don't know. I I, I don't even know. You did expect that coming. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, mm. Let's see how they modernize it. Oh, <laughs> so, you know, maybe he can magic mic that shit. Speaking of, know. speaking oh, of. Oh no! You said you the words. <laughs> you said the thing. I segued. I segued. I see what you did. We have now entered the thirst portion of the program, ladies and gentlemen. Kanina parang kanina pa ako nag thirst. Misha, shazam palang. That's right. And we're talking about the new Paw Patrol movie. Wait, what? 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 What Paw Patrol movie? But yes, there Nothing. will be a Paw Patrol movie. I'm, I'm like, that's actually something my nephews are looking forward to. Oh, but um, back to back to Magic Mike. <laughs> Magic Mike's Last Dance with Channing yes. Tatum coming out in February 2023. Uh, I couldn't. I wouldn't say that the two previous Magic Mike movies were cinematic masterpieces. <laughs> Mm-hmm. In no stretch of the imagin- Im- imagination. The first one tried because it was Soderbergh, right? So it's Bruh. like, eh, they tried. They gave him depth. Yes, he's not just some random stripper. But in the second one, they just went all out fun with it. It's just like fan service. Like, give you all the naked men. Yes. So I'm interested to see like how they're going to tie this up. I feel like this will try to have a middle ground between the first two movies because they're still gonna inject some story into it because it's you know his last story. dance uh, uh, admit it the story in questions are abs story right actually the first one wasn't I mean kulang uh, I mean what we didn't get in the first one they totally made up for in the second one because they really tried to focus on that and then they just owned it in the second one I mean at this point mm. Just surprise me. Okay, just I'm I'll watch it anyway. I don't care. <laughs> we we know you're going to watch it. Yeah. yeah. Regardless. They could turn the sound off, you'd watch it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, and uh joining them will be Sam Hayek. Oh, I'm watching. <laughs> Sam Hayek. Okay, speaking of shirtless men, there's a you know, there's going to be Creed 3. <laughs> Michael B Jordan. Mm. I am I I've, I love I love the Creed movies. I didn't think I'd like I'd enjoy the Creed movies just because I'm a Rocky fan. Same here. But then, but then the first Creed movie came out and it was pretty it good. It was so it was, good. It was, it was Ryan such... Coogler, the director of Black Panther 1 and 2. Mhm. It, it was amazing. It was such a good character study of what the son of Apollo Creed might be going through, you know. It's mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. It was also kind of like a coming of age, not really a coming of age, just more of a self-realization movie where he found himself doing what really made him happy. Also, he's got daddy issues. <laughs> Absolutely. And those, and those issues continued into the second movie. And now we have the third one where Michael B. Jordan himself is taking the director's chair. Because Creed Yay! 1 is directed by Ryan Coogler. Creed 2 was Sylvester Stallone in his last outing as Rocky. And Super. now for the third film, we got Michael B. Jordan directing. And I cannot wait. It's always quite interesting when you have these actors and they start directing their own movies. You get, I know. You get, you get like projects like Million Dollar Baby, not another boxing movie. Just because Clint Eastwood was, st- <laughs> was an actor in it and he directed that movie. You know, Clint Eastwood is known now more as a director than he is as an actor. That is true. That is true. So this is going to be quite interesting. And also, may I just say, Michael B. Jordan also featured in one of my favorite cameo appearances of last year. Also one of the best films of last year, Wakanda Forever. Um, he, I did not expect to see him at all. Because he pretty much died in the first Black Panther. Mm-hmm. But they found a way. 
in the in a way that I, made sense for the story. It was emotional. It was fantastic, and I want to see I, more of that in Creed Three. I kind of, I kind of, I kind of predicted that because he was he became a king, right? So he would it would make sense that he would be in that astral plane where they go for the ritual. That was cool. I have no complaints for Creed as long as he doesn't have those like little dot things that yeah. he had in Black Panther. Soul it was like scars. one of the yeah. first times I was yeah. like, please put your shirt on my tripophobia. Yeah. No! That that triggered a lot of people's tripophobia. I had like a mm-hmm. friend say, mm-hmm. lag lag na sana, pero <laughs> exactly. may bukol. Uh, may bukol, bukol. Uh, the tripophobia <laughs> is real. It, 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 it comes close yeah. second to the few times I ask my favorite actors to please put their shirt back on. Number one, mm-hmm. still Idris Elba in Cats. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I have no idea how he is as a director, so this should be interesting. And yeah. the, the thing about the Creed movies is, even if you've never seen a Rocky movie in your life, they absolutely work. It's just fantastic character work all around. Even the second one, which is super fan service Yeah, even if you've never <laughs> seen Rocky IV, which is pretty much a sequel too, it's amazing as a standalone mm-hmm. sequel to... Creed 1. Yeah, it gets confusing. Okay, um, also speaking of great action sequels, I guess, well, Creed is a little bit of a drama, but then another sequel I'm looking forward to actually is Dune. Ooh, ah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The yeah. first one was a feast, an absolute feast. The first one had a lot of setting up to do, which um, I feel like some people who did not watch it on the big screen could have found dragging because mm-hmm. uh, number one, you're not seeing it in its full glory. Number True. two, there was a lot to take in, but I'm excited for things to pick up. I'm excited Absolutely. to see more of Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya and um, everybody else who was in that first one. Because yeah, it was definitely interesting enough for you to want to invest in the rest of the series. I mean, like the first one was great. Like some people said it's, some people would say it was a slow burn, but I mean, the storytelling was amazing. The world building alone yeah. kept me interested, kept me, it's keeping me curious, very curious about the second movie because that you we know that's where all the action is going to start happening. Mm-hmm. It's insane, actually, because you know the first one had people like Josh Brolin, Dave Bautista, um, Jason Javier Momoa, Bardem, and Oscar Jason Isaac. Momoa. The sequel is going to have <laughs> the sequel's got El freaking Elvis, Austin Butler, Christopher Walken, Leia Sedu, and Florence Pugh. For heaven's sake, yeah, Florence I mean, Pugh. That cast, that I mean cast. like what the actual hell? Now I, oh, I was one man. of those people who thought that. that the first movie was a little top heavy. It was just a lot to take in. But I agree. Now that the play setting is done, the second movie can just run with everything that was introduced. So this yep. should be we this should be fun. Yeah. Dude. And it's coming out in November, I think. Coolness. It's, it's heavy sci-fi. But as for a sequel, it's coming up a little bit closer. Um we're expecting this one to hit in March. It is John Wick Chapter Four. Yeah. Yeah, because there's still some people John Wick hasn't killed yet. I don't know how they're gonna keep building on John Wick's character, but it's just so much fun watching, you know, watching Keanu Reeves go through all these. You know, at this point, I don't really care where his character goes as long as it's still fun. Blood Gratuitous shedding. Violence. Yes, exactly. It's like, <laughs> how is... mad are is this dude to keep killing so many people because of a dog? I mean, I don't. Uh, I don't, really I don't know. Like, I, I would do. I mean, like, if I had the skill set, you know, and my dog was killed, I'd probably do the same thing. Same. Like, <laughs> same Fuck y'all. Yeah. Fuck y'all. I'm gonna kill y'all, motherfuckers, because you killed my dog. Yeah, yeah, but guess what? This new one, he's gonna go. Uh, you know how in the in the last one he went up against Mark the Cascos. The Iron Chef himself. Um, in this new one, he's going up against Donnie Yen. Oh, that's, that's even more interesting because oh. Donnie, Yen, Donnie Yen is fucking Donnie Yen. So, Donnie and motherfucking know, Yen! And you know, Bill Skarsgård. Bill motherfucking Skarsgård! Skarsgård. <laughs> I'm not, and that's, dude, he's gonna be going up against it, man. That's and Hiroyuki, Sin, Hiroyuki Sanada's in this. I don't know what the hell he's doing, but I'll watch him in anything. Uh. Yeah. Fuck, fuck. I'm I'm sold. 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 Get over here. Wow. And apparently Anna de Armas is in this thing too. And oh, instead I'm of sold. I'm sold. <laughs> instead of just for 15 gonna, minutes, you, you, she you said gonna, this was harder to do than the James Bond movie cuz that one she was only in it for 15 minutes. Here she's fighting for the whole freaking movie. So I mean, I mean That's exactly what we wanted. 
You could have led with you could have led with you could have led with Ana de Armas. And okay, we, we, it I'm, I'm been sorry. Straight so. Okay, okay, I'll fix that. Hold on, John Wick Chapter Four, starring Ana de Armas. Done. We're watching. Better, <laughs> better. Yeah. The okay. Keanu Reeves. <laughs> yeah, Ana de Armas. It's Ana de Armas. I'm sorry. Uh, I love Keanu wow. though, so I'm excited. I I'm know. Just, I'm always I'm happy to see Keanu, even if yeah. he's playing the same stoic, you know, the, dude. The, 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 yes, the, 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 the only one, guy he knows. The one thing I'm actually more interested, or you know, I'm I'm excited about seeing, are the be- the behind the scenes training footage of the cast because you know that's how they become a brotherhood of sorts, mm-hmm, or how mm-hmm. they become family. Don't you know, like, yen. You know, right? So I want to see how they train, especially with the gun kata and everything. <laughs> like if there's one thing that I enjoy the most in John Wick is how they ha- handle their firearms. It's the best. Okay, I'm sorry. This just in. Ana de Armas is not in this movie. Boo! Oh, you liar! But she is going to be the star of the spin-off movie called Ballerina, which features the, ba- the ballet school that Morticia was running in John Wick 2. Morticia? Oh, yeah. Adams? <laughs> <laughs> Meh. Uh, never the? mind. Never mind. So okay, she's so- a ballerina assassin. That's cool. That is no, cool. <laughs> ballerina. No, no. Babarel. That did not uh, fly. No, no. But okay, no, fine. No. So talking about one superhuman human being franchise, we're gonna move on to Mission Impossible. Oh we're my f- god, Tom, <laughs> Tom Cruise. Cruise is not human. He's, we're a freaking oh. sixty year old is still doing stunts, <laughs> running oh. off of build, ju- running and jumping off of buildings, riding off ramps, oh flying, jumping off of cliffs. To but, apparently go, you know, open up a parachute. If you My guys God. haven't seen it yet, there's this clip online that went viral in December where he thanked the whole world for watching Mission Impossible 2. He says thank you to everybody about jumping out of a helicopter to skydive. Mission Impossible 2? Or, or no, Top no, Gun? No, no, no. Top, top Gun. Top Gun, yeah. Yeah. And um, Misha also, we saw each other recently and Misha showed us this clip of the behind the scenes of Mission Impossible (laughs) wherein the crew actually had to build this crazy long ramp over a mountain so that Tom Cruise can ride a motorcycle off of it and jump into a cliff. Multiple times. Multiple fucking times. And can you imagine how hard it is for the director to kind of like keep all those (laughs) nerves together? It's like, oh my God, my actor's gonna die. My actor's Tom Cruise. Holy fucking shit. So many things could go wrong. Look, look, look. Interesting tidbit too. They only had access to that location via helicopter. So imagine how expensive building that freaking ramp is. Flying all your cast and crew to that spot. And shooting that take multiple times, man, that probably like a fourth of the budget would have gone to just one shot or one yeah. sequence. Insane. Like That's driving just... a motorcycle off a cliff over and over and over again just so your star can parachute off it. At one point, you're either going to run out of motorcycles or actors. So, uh, you know, you know. If, if I was the director of this movie, I probably wouldn't have been watching the monitors anymore. <laughs> I, just, I mean, I just like, be praying. Like, fuck if I approve the shot, just make it. <laughs> well, like, apparently, Tom Cruise has promised or said, or I don't know how true this will be if these money, if these movies end up making money as they always do. But we're talking about Mission Impossible Seven. It was shot back to back with Mission Impossible Eight, and they've been pretty much shooting since like the beginning or just before the pandemic. Tom Cruise is sixty. Yeah. He's so, Tom Cruise is insane. I think so, he has an adrenaline um, addiction. No, but just to put yeah, things in pretty, perspective, pretty clear. <laughs> like a lot of the people watching these movies now weren't even alive when Mission Impossible One came out. Because True. I'm not even kidding, the first Mission Impossible came out in 1996. Wow. <sighs> yeah. The the one thing I remembered with that movie was that they killed off Coach Bombay. <laughs> in the first five minutes. Yeah, via elevator in the first five minutes. That's like, true. Coach, Coach Bombay! And Angelina Jolie's dad was the bad guy. Yes, he was. <laughs> mm. It's just quite interesting to see because I recently did a Mission Impossible marathon and it's quite interesting to see how evolved the mo- the modern movies are compared to the first one and how complex the storylines are now with the character of Ethan Hunt. Well, the first one was pretty complex. It was, but you know, comparing it to what he's being thrown at right now, it's just vastly different. It's kind of cool. <laughs> and 
No bullshit. They get exponentially better from three onwards. Like each one is better than the last. Yes. I, yes. And I now we're up that. to seven. Oh my God. Going on eight. Going on Apparently. eight. God forbid something happened to Tom Cruise. Eh. Lord, please no. Um, speaking of old men and action movies, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny with Harrison Ford. Hey. Hey, huh? <laughs> hey someone's happy. Hey, hey, they are old. That's okay. There's no denying old. it. Especially Harrison Ford. So I said three. How old is Harrison Ford? My mom's crush. My mom's <laughs> crush. Harrison Ford is seventy-eight. Oh God my damn. God, he's pushing eighty, and he's still doing Indiana fucking Jones. <laughs> well, how much? How much of the stunts will be him, or how much of the stunts will be a deep fake of his face well, on the stunt? Look at pen? it this way: when they were shooting in Europe, apparently he was like biking twenty miles a day before the day shooting every fucking day. Wasn't he also the guy who broke an arm while filming Star Wars? No, he broke a leg when a chunk of leg. the Millennium Falcon fell, fell on him. And so this, this is a guy who crashes a plane like every two years just to remind us that he still has a pilot's license. And somehow guy. he always walks away from each crash. So question is, who is more intense? Tom Cruise or Harrison Ford? <laughs> I think Harrison Ford's just more low-key. I don't know. Yeah. But I'm going to watch the shit out of this movie because anything has to be better than Indiana Jones 4. Oh my God, that movie was so bad. I don't even yeah. remember anything about that except for Kate Blanchett's god-awful bangs. Oh, right. And the CGI ants. I don't even remember CGI ants. It's not the bug's life. <laughs> or the CGI jungle. Because like, what really made the old movies fun was that it was like real stunt people doing real stunts. So, like the you know, practical it, effects? Yes. It looks amazing. And when you see CGI Shia LaBeouf swinging through a CGI jungle with CGI monkeys, it's really bad. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. And speaking of old men also, there's apparently The Expendables 4 coming out in <laughs> September. Oh when will god. this insanity stop? Oh my god, we're back at the gratuitous violence category. Yeah. And old yep, men, yep. we're still in that. Okay. So Except this Stallone. one. Sylvester but Stallone they, too. It's like, what the fuck, man? Okay. But guys, this one is Tony John, ja Andy Garcia. Okay, fine. Tony More John, old so. men. <laughs> Tony Jaa is not that old. He's probably in his 40s now. It's not that old. And Tony 50 Cent's gonna be in it. What? Man, that guy's old. He's used to being shot at. Okay, fine. That's, 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 yeah, that's true, but you know, fine. Fine. Um, uh, okay, okay. I'm Enough not sure about, about 50 Cent though, because the last time I saw him in that… Um, when was that? There was a performance. Super Bowl. Yeah, Super Bowl with the Snoop Dogg Eminem. I know he could he barely was... do the he could barely do that crunch. I know. So like <laughs> uh, maybe he's working on it, maybe getting back into shape because you know, uh, TBH he's like one dollar right now. <laughs> I mean, he's allowed to enjoy his. I know, <laughs> I know. He he earned it, but like for an action movie, you gotta get back to fifty cent from a dollar. Well, yeah, well, apparently Sylvester Stallone is in the process of retiring his his <gasps> franchise character. So he says that this is going to be his last one. And if there's going to be an Expendables 5, Jason Statham is going to be the lead. Ooh. Which is fine. Which yeah. is fine. I, I can live with that. It's I always been the two that. of them. It's all, They've mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. been the leaders of the group. Yeah. So, which is fine. Absolutely. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay I, so didn't, I, I didn't really watch the third one anymore because it just okay. gets rid even more ridiculous. But actually… The third one is kind of crap. The yeah. third one was crap. Yeah. We'll see about the fourth one. Okay, enough about old men, but this is… Why? I was <laughs> just kidding. Enough about old men and guns and okay. gratuitous <laughs> violence. But okay, this is something fine, that's, fine, fine, fine. that's quite interesting to me. And I'm very curious as to what it will turn out or how it will turn out to be. The Barbie movie. Yeah, I want to see that so bad. <laughs> that is I'm like, curious. That's like opposite end of the spectrum. From I like absolutely want to see that. Blood. It's, it's like, like pink. It's, pink. Bright pink. <laughs> You know, you got like the neon green. You know, you've seen the studio photos, not studio, but location photos of Ryan Gosling, who is Ken, and yes. and Mar and Bar and Margot Robbie, who plays Barbie, in like these bright pink neon yellow tights, whatever mm -hmm, roller skate, mm -hmm. roller skating in California was it? I don't know, but that's quite interesting to see how this movie's going to turn out. It, the teaser trailer looked like a whole lot of fun. They were sending up 2001: A Space Odyssey. It looks like. It looks like 
Honestly, it's going to be a barrel of laughs. I, I, and it look, it's like as far as I could possibly imagine from whatever movie they were going to make when it oh. starred Amy Schumer. Because honestly, I do not know what that Barbie movie would even look like. And it's directed by uh, Greta Gerwig. So you know mm-hmm, that it's mm-hmm. going to be fun. It's colorful, but it's still going to have substance. Yes. So, That's interesting. yeah. But if On- they do not use Aqua's Barbie Girl in the soundtrack, I will be very disappointed. I think they're I'm not, pre- pre- not going to use it. Why not? They're not? Why not? Because Mattel sued them. They sued Boo. the record label Boo. all those years ago. Boo. Does anyone actually remember the lyrics to that song? Come on, Barbie. Let's go party. Ah, 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 yeah. Come on, Barbie. And let's go, go on. Undress me everywhere. There we go. There it is. Life is your creation. That's what you yeah. do with Barbies. Come on. Mattel did not take kindly to that. <laughs> what do you expect yeah. us to do with all the clothes you ask us to buy for those Barbies? Well, my 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 sister's my sister's room when we were kids had a lot of Barbies and they were mostly undressed. I yeah. don't know why. How the hell are you going to put all the different editions of clothes on them if you don't undress them? Duh, Mattel. Mm. Duh. Oh. There's that. Okay. So on the flip side of Barbie, where we're all pretty much excited, there's going to be, you know, talking about toys that have become, or that can be movie franchises, we have the Transformers movie. Mm. That- with, with robot apes. <laughs> You're talking about Transformers Rise of the Beasts. It comes out in June. Uh, it's picking up from where Bumblebee left off. Bumblebee and wasn't bad. Bumblebee was not bad. It was and Bumblebee was set reboot. in which was a, it was set in the 80s and this new one apparently will be set in the 90s. Uh, so they're doing this whole X-Men universe thing where they're going to soft reboot stuff where other characters don't. And then don't, pretend that it all ties together somehow. Even if other characters don't look like they originally did. Even if the Autobots haven't arrived on this planet yet. Yep. Yeah. Because, so the, you know, even mm. Stevens hasn't discovered them yet. Even yes. Stevens. <laughs> even Stevens. Yes. Uh, Hi. Okay. But I'm hoping it'll be fun because, you know, you can't go wrong with robots that turn into giant animals. Mm. Speaking of animals, speaking mm. of animals. Ooh, ooh, a segue, a segue. Speaking of animals, I'm going to be talking about a bear. A very oh, famous ooh, bear. Ooh, we have now entered famous, <laughs> a the very, Nicolas very, Cage portion of the program. Uh, a very, very famous bear mm-hmm, who does mm-hmm. not wear pants and wears a red shirt who supposedly <laughs> looks like a country's leader. Oh my God, I got it wrong. I'm so sorry. I got the wrong bear. Wait, uh, we'll talk about the other bear later. Let's get to Winnie the Pooh first. We'll talk about this first. Okay, this Winnie the Pooh Oh my God, I can't wait. Is not produced by Disney. Nope, nope, nope. Instead, the title of this movie will be called Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey. (laughs) So so we're going to be in for a ride with this fucked up version of Winnie the Pooh. I have been dying to see this. Me since too. I've seen this. Yeah, right? Since we've seen all these promo photos that have come out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, it looks mm-hmm, amazing. Mm-hmm. And it's, I mean, a lot of um, TV shows, especially, I'm looking at UCW, for uh, <laughs> turning um, classics that we love that have absolutely no violence or any sort of like darkness at all and turning them into some sort of like horror shit like Riverdale. Um, but R- Riverdale's this- fucked up, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like Wait, you have Archie banging Miss Grundy. No. No, mm-hmm. fuck that shit. Wait, tama ba ako? CW nga? Or WB? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, CW. That's okay. okay. the same thing. Okay. Okay. There's yeah, no so- more WB. It's okay, CW. CW. All right. Mm. So there we we've and then they well Sabrina you know you know where it's going with it because it's witchy and stuff. But then they like went all out with it and it's also like eh. But this kind of like going all out and just like completely twisting what you've known from your childhood. This I am all aboard on. Mm. Here, here's the funny thing. Okay, because um, orig- the, the, the reason they're able to make this Winnie the Pooh adaptation, despite the fact that Disney, for all intents and purposes, owns the film rights to Winnie the Pooh, as most people know him, you know, red shirt, um, you know, um, be cute animated adventures, all that stuff. They're based on the original books. That's because Disney Corporation has had a stranglehold on U.S. legislation. And every time that their copyright was up, they were able to have the law changed so that copyrights get extended. Because basically, copyrights are, aren't supposed to last forever. 
right? Because after the original creator dies, it can only last for a certain amount of time. Otherwise, um, you know, somebody can make money off that, that exact version forever. But that's why we have fairy tales like Snow White and Cinderella and all those. Nobody owns those. Disney only owns the most popular versions. But as far as Winnie the Pooh is concerned, they actually own Winnie the Pooh. But because their copyright supposedly ended already, now anybody can make it. And it looks like coming up soon is going to be characters like Mickey Mouse. What happens when those characters' copyrights run out? And that anybody can make Mickey Mouse movies and toys and books and shows and theme parks. So we'll see. <laughs> imagine, imagine if this comes out on streaming. Obviously, it might not be on Disney Plus, mm-hmm. but it could be on Netflix. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have a child safety lock and you have, like, let's say, your nephews or nie- nieces yep. over, yep. and they see Winnie the Pooh on Netflix, oh god, that's gonna be. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the idea. Thank you yeah. for the idea. <laughs> Imagine one day Tigger comes over, asks Winnie the Pooh to play, and Winnie decides he's tired of Tigger's shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I was so excited to see where this goes. So, Murderous yeah. Winnie the Pooh. Ba- basically, like every 25 years, Disney manages to extend copyright law. He manages to have copyright law rewritten in the United States. So right now they've got it up to 95 years. So let's see how much longer they can hold on to their characters. <laughs> oh, speaking of bears, the bear <laughs> the bear Misha was thinking about earlier was actually I'm cocaine so bear. I'm so sorry. Cocaine bear, which I also would like to see. It's based on a true story. <laughs> Please, please tell us that story. Just give us it's a It's about a bear that goes on a massive, that takes a massive dose of cocaine and just goes <laughs> wild. And insanity ensues and Nicolas Cage in it. And he's totally excited to be in it because I think Nicolas Cage is just the perfect kind of crazy. Especially for something with a title like Cocaine Bear. Mm-hmm. That's Cocaine Bear. You can't go wrong with it. I'm watching this movie. Me I know. Too. And it was one of um, Ray Liotta's Last movies, actually. Oh, oh yeah. Rest in peace. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I would Carrie love Russell's to see in it. <laughs> yep. I would love to see a coked up bear just like Rick Havoc. <laughs> I'm so ex- But that in itself, that premise in itself is already crazy for a movie. So can you imagine that it actually kind of happened uh, supposedly in real life? So probably not as mm-hmm. exaggerated, but like sold. I'm watching that shit. You know, this is going to be fun because it's Elizabeth Banks directing it. So it's a, there's going to be some substance in it. And humor, I guess. And humor, and humor. Yeah. Yes. You know, it's not going to be like The Meg 2 where it's just, you know. Well, that's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to watch stupid movies like The Meg 2. I know, right? Oh, and also speaking of Nicolas Cage, you mentioned him earlier. He's also ah, in a movie I really ah, want to see. Ah, he is going to be playing Count Dracula himself <laughs> in Renfield. <laughs> Oh my god, this movie looks like a lot of fun. It does. And um, it also stars Nicholas Holt. And it's a horror comedy. I feel like it's about, you know, this... Uh, Nicholas Holt plays like... Um, the servant of Count Dracula. And he's like, oh my god, this relationship is so toxic. So he <laughs> goes to therapy for it. <laughs> or like the some... poor man. For, or some... Um, what do you call those? Uh, a- AA type group yeah. um, sessions. Group, yeah, those, yeah. Yeah, those group, group therapy sessions, sessions talking about his boss when actually his fucking boss is Count Dracula himself. Uh, I so think he'd stupid. have a lot to complain about. You know, you're going to have to bring the guy, you know, booby women every night that he can feast on. You have to find him like airplanes and ships to travel on that will allow his coffin in the first place. You'd have to find him a giant ass house wherever you go so that he can chill. And, you know, his boss can't even enter a building unless you invite him in the first place. So, <laughs> yes, he would have a lot to rant about. Yeah, that's, really? it's, yeah that's... the trailer looks so fun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then we have Nicolas Cage in the most Nicolas Cage role of all. It's <laughs> mm. <laughs> Count Dracula. I know. Oh. I saw the trailer. He opened his mouth. He had like 87 teeth. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love, okay. I love it. Okay, so there's okay, so we have that movie. Okay, there's this was one movie that I'm quite interested in in seeing because it has one of my, you know, like one of my favorite 
actresses to watch. It's got Aubrey Plaza in it. And it's good. It's not going to be in a typical Aubrey Plaza role. It's going to be an action movie called Operation Fortune. With I Jason really want to see that. Yes, it looks yes. insane. Yep. You have Jason Statham and you have Josh Hartnett go and Aubrey Plaza going up against Hugh Grant. So that's Ooh. quite interesting to see. If you've seen the trailer, it's going to be fun. It looks like it's a lot of fun. I'm I have not, not, sure not if it's seen be- Hugh Grant in forever. Yeah. Like I feel yep. like I haven't seen him in a lot of movies recently. Yep. I saw thing, him recently, but I don't want to spoil it. Okay. Well, yeah. So, but in, in the thing, the thing about this movie is that it's a it's a Guy Ritchie movie. Um, Wait, I have a more important question. Where the hell's Josh Hartnett been the last twenty years? Maybe Josh he, Hartnett. I used maybe, to have such a huge crush on him. It was Pearl he, Harbor, he, yo. He, <laughs> wasn't he? Fr- wasn't he in the Man from the High Castle? Oh yeah. Like, so but maybe he's been that, busy with that. He's just been busy with TV. Streaming, like, but you know, I mean, you know, I like, see how he looks now, Josh but, Hartman. He still serious. looks the same. He looks good, like you know, like a bit older, but you know, oh, he's still cute. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, just a so, little softer around the edges, I guess. Yeah, still cute. Anyway, still sorry, <laughs> sorry, go on. So yeah, there's that. You know, <laughs> it's Aubrey Plaza in an action movie. I've never seen in. I've never seen her in anything other than dark comedies. Snarky comedies. That's true. That's true. You she know. was in White Chucky. Lotus season two. Ch- yeah, well, Chucky is like a dark comedy. You know. <laughs> That's true. And so it's quite. I wasn't to laughing. See her. <laughs> I wasn't laughing. Aww. Well, I was laughing at how bad that movie was. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So that's the laughing. But you know, like <laughs> at least we know it's a, gonna be a Guy Ritchie movie. If it's not uh, gonna be one of the best, it's still gonna be entertaining. It's gonna be action packed. I hope so. So there. Josh Hartnett, huh? Maybe he went through this whole 40 days, 40 nights thing that he extended for a while. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe that's a, that explains <clears throat> his disappearance. There's <laughs> also going to be a number of new franchises coming our way this year, not the least of which is April Super Mario movie which is coming to us from the Illumination Animation Studios. <laughs> and I don't know what to think. He's it not, looks he's, amazing. He's but not going to sound like, it's a me, a Mario. Oh, exactly. No. He does not sound like an Italian stereotype. How am I supposed to feel about this? Uh, we'll see. I mean... But it's Chris Pratt. Chris I mean, Pratt. Chris, <laughs> Chris, it's Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. Mm. So, it, I don't know. Well, I I don't think in 2023 he'll be able to pull off an Italian accent without actually being Italian. Mm. So why'd they hire him to play a guy named Mario? Mm. I have lots Beats of me. questions. Lots of questions. Uh, but I grew up on Sonic, not Mario, so not a big factor. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, mm-hmm. so this might be some this might be something that Misha might be interested in. Mm-hmm. It's very niche. I like mm-hmm. it too. So there's going to be a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie called Mutant Mayhem. How the hell is that niche? They've been selling like a bajillion toys since 1980. God knows yeah, when. They have a new the, cartoon every three years. It, it's the one franchise that always <clears throat> gets rebooted and then gets killed off and then gets rebooted every after five years or so. Yeah, but they make tons of money while they're yeah, at it. So. That's true. I, I, yeah. I, I want to see this because I don't like the new Ninja Turtles in, on Nickelodeon. So I want to see this. I'm I, on the fence. The new one is being done by Seth Rogen. So I don't know if it'll be good. <laughs> <or not. laughs> I hope none of them sounds like Seth Rogen. I hope I hope not. So, but you know, it's it's the Ninja Turtles. It, I grew up on the 1984 movies. <clears throat> Re- reruns, by the way, maybe Misha grew up with the original run. <laughs> I'm glad the cartoon came out in '87, and I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> no, but uh, you know this this franchise holds a very special place in my heart, so I want to watch it. Honestly, I haven't really caught up with the um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in the recent years. I think the last one I really saw was the animated series one back in my childhood. But actually, it's promising to hear that Seth Rogen has something to do with it because mm-hmm. he turned the boys into something that I never really expected, but the boy's actually brilliant. With him Good producing point. and true. you know turning it into something very unexpected, very anti-superhero, superhero kind of franchise, mm-hmm. that excites me. Just given that track record of what he's done to the boys, I'm actually yeah. interested. That's a that's a very good point. 
you know, with Seth Rogen attached to this project. So mm-hmm. it's interesting. Okay. Um, yes. Also, another uh, franchise or actually a reboot. I don't know how to feel about this, but <clears throat> coming in the web November is the new Willy Wonka movie with Timothy Chalamet. It's a prequel. I- I, I okay. don't know how to feel. He, here's the I thing. I don't know either. Here, here's the thing. We all have very we, we all have strong feelings about prequels, about estab- very well established characters. You know, like okay, fine, Cruella is an exception, but you, we all know how Maleficent went, right? <laughs> Cruella, Cruella wasn't was, even that. Mm. It was fun. We had fun with the movie. It's just you know, like no, the, you know, not Cruella would be a great movie if it had nothing to do with the hundred and one Dalmatians. Yes. Okay. Fine. There we go. But then Wonka. We all know what happened with the Burton Wonka movie. You know, wah, we already. Wah. Wah, wah. We already had a great one in Gene Wilder. So why would you go dark? And this looks like it's going to go darker. I have no idea. I really don't. Uh, <clears throat> I love Timothy Chalamet, but I um, it's one of those cases for me that is it even time for another Willy <clears throat> Wonka? Because or am I just that old <laughs> that I feel like I didn't feel time pass? That I feel like it Johnny the Johnny Depp Willy Wonka was still so recent. That it's just too early. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't really enjoy that. And then, I didn't enjoy it either. But then in terms of just like yeah. timeline, we're making another one. It's like… Maybe yeah. it it's, was I, that I, bad I, that I we don't really I genuinely don't know need. who was asking for that prequel. Yeah. Nobody really. <clears throat> Did anybody really ask it, for it? it? I don't know. Yeah, right? Like, it, it's not like… It, I don't know. It's like… We don't need a reminder that Willy Wonka exists. It's not like it's such a big franchise also. Like, right? I, I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully it surprises us, you know. <laughs> and then we have the Hunger Games prequel. Uh, do we need it? Because I'm everybody dying. needs to know how President Snow came into power. Who gives uh, he, a shit? <laughs> I'm sorry. He for, he for sure came know. after President, after the fall of the previous president. Uh, fuck this movie. Uh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really a fan of the Hunger Games franchise. I actually am. I honestly enjoyed the first three movies. But then, of all the people to make a sequel for, like, who the fuck cares about President Snow? But what I'd rather see in a prequel is actually the story of Hamish, played by Woody yes, Harrelson. I would watch that. Uh, yeah, I, would I would rather care. watch that. Yeah, I would rather watch that. Or I'd rather watch even as obscure of a character as Cena played by Lenny Kravitz because he's fucking Lenny Kravitz. I'd rather no, watch I, that. I, I, I would even, watch a two-hour movie of Effie going shopping. Exactly. Effie and also uh, Stanley Tucci. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right? So like these are… Ca- Getting his hair done. Exactly. I'd watch that. People, these are people <laughs> who could be in a potential prequel that I care more about. Nobody fucking cares about President Snow. Yeah, exactly. Like they're going to try to pull off a Maleficent for this one. <sighs> but still no. It's not like we're attached to this character, right? Oh, Speaking of characters we can get attached to, Elle Woods is going to make a comeback <gasps> next this year. I don't know how to feel about that either though. So there's not a lot known about the project except that there's going to be a Legally Blonde 3 and Reese Witherspoon is going to come back as Elle Woods, of course. How can you not? How can you not have a Legally Blonde 3 movie without Reese Witherspoon? And Honestly. Jennifer Coolidge. Of Jennifer course. Coolidge is going to be in it also. Uh, um, especially with her success in White Lotus. I mean, she has to like really keep the ball rolling. But I don't know how to feel about this because we all know how nostalgia sequels have turned out. Um, most of it tanked. Honestly, the only good one I can remember is Ghostbusters Afterlife. But we're looking at Scream. We're looking at um, The Matrix Resurrections. Those failed miserably. So a beloved franchise such as Legally Blonde is actually really frightening to me. You can't do a new Legally Blonde. Well, Bruiser Woods would be dead. No! No! (laughs) Well, we'll see. Maybe... Bruiser! they might, they might explain that. Hopefully, R.I.P. Bruiser Woods. What? Then, he would be twenty. Ha- you know, I don't know. I don't know if this will be good because they have Mindy Kaling attached to the project as a writer. Of, That's as not one of the writers. Bring the dog back. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, there. Legally blunt too. I mean, like, I love you, Spoon. I'm afraid. I'm genuinely frightened. I'm. 
gangsters yeah. and being ageist. Why? You are because because uh, Bruiser Woods would not be alive anymore. It's true. Yeah. He's a dog. <laughs> He's a poor thing. <laughs> Maybe they'll open with his funeral. Oh, that's that. dark, man. That's dark. Better than not acknowledging him. Mm. Mm, okay, fine, fine, fair enough. Um, uh, I guess. Well, I really don't know how to segue this. <laughs> So are, there any, any, are there any uplifting just, animal movies we, this year? <laughs> Fucking okay. Paw Patrol. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Paw Patrol, li- the mighty movie. In that, lighter that, animal that, news, there's that, a Paw Patrol movie coming out. <laughs> that might, the, you know what? That might actually be a movie that I would be watching because of my, my son. So I, I don't know. I would definitely be watching it with my nephews. And it stars Dax Shepard and Taraji P. Henson. Who would have thought? Uh, I don't know. It's still, like, where are they going to put them? I have no idea, but okay. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, speaking of Taraji P. Henson, who I still cannot point out who she will be in Paw Patrol, but there will be the color purple. It's okay. a remake, right? They're remaking it's, that. Yeah, it's a musical. And actually, if you're a fan of music, um, this is going to be interesting for you because besides uh, Taraji P. Henson playing in this um, actually a very uh, important novel in literature, uh, we're going to have singers such as Fantasia Barino. I mean, <laughs> wow, American wow. Idol. Um, the also, hell has she been? Maybe she was with Josh Hartnett. <laughs> <laughs> We also have Sierra, who's going to be joining the cast, and mm-hmm. her. I mean, H E R, the 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 music artist. Ah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so not the AI. No. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I think her name, her real name is Gabby Wilson. Her, mm. like uh, her. her her name. I, let okay. me just let me just get just double check. Oh yes, I was right. Uh, yeah. Gabby Wilson. But anyway, um, moving on. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting. Like people can actually, you know, people can actually sing. And it's going to be a mm-hmm. musical. And with Taraji P. Helm, Henson in the helm. I mean. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I hope it's good. I hope so I hope too. Speaking of a nice piece of um, historical literature, like talking about history now, uh, Chris Nolan is going to have a new movie coming out this year. About Ooh, a historical it? character named Oppenheimer. Ah. Oppenheimer. Yes. The dude who is responsible for the nuclear bombs. Ooh. So I don't know. I don't know how he's going to pull this. Because, you know, like, as what movies has Chris Nolan done recently that's been, you know, like, um, based, on, based on history? Except maybe, for, except maybe Dunkirk. Mm. Literally so I'm pretty, just that. Literally just that, right? It's mostly sci-fi or superhero movies in the past decade or so. <laughs> Batman. And, <laughs> and the cast is really stacked as well. We've got Killian Murphy, Emily Blunt, Matt Damon, Florence Pugh, Robert Downey Jr., and Rami Malek. That's that stacked. True. You have your mainstays, your Chris Nolan mainstays, and some new guys who are you know top-notch performers. And not only that, he is still living up to his insane fetish of shooting everything for <laughs> real. Apparently, he found a way to do a nuclear explosion practically. So this should be interesting. Uh, I, I don't know. That I want to see. Like no CG. That's what they said. They did it all in cam. So. So, I have no freaking idea. Okay, so just so we're clear visually for those listening without a visual of this. So how different is a nuclear explosion from like a regular gasoline car explosion? Is it then the one that looks like a mushroom? A mm-hmm. mushroom cloud plus yeah. you have to yeah, you have to recreate that after that that um after that wave. Yeah. yeah. That wave yeah. that comes after the initial explosion. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, so just so we're clear, no it's idea. that mushroom. Okay. Yeah. Know. Well, it's that know. ginormous mushroom. <laughs> and where would you do that? Where would you do this? Right? I have like, no idea. Where? Well, the first question is how. The second question is if you figure out the how, where do you do this? Hmm. That's insane. It's Chris Nolan. It's like this kid who has so much money, he can just play a lot, play with a lot of fireworks. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's like he's like he's like the kid in Toy Story. He's like Sid. It's like he gets the big <laughs> bomb and th- straps it on like a stuntman or something, aka Buzz Lightyear, and then makes it explode. I don't know. Huh, that's uh, gonna be interesting to see. But I want to see this because it's Chris Nolan. So he keeps. Mm. It's just interesting how he'll work around that's this whole 
atom bomb explosion recreation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, well, now he has Universal Studios money to play with. Um, this is one of his first major releases not to be released by Warner Brothers, of course. Christopher Nolan um, essentially walked away from Warner Brothers after that whole debacle where they were just releasing movies on their streaming platform on the same day as they were releasing in theaters that, during the pandemic. And this was a, part of the fallout. That's a huge name to lose. If you're mm-hmm. already a studio that's struggling with your franchises, that's a huge name to lose. Mm-hmm. And yep. So yeah, I, I'm hoping that we'll see a fresh shot of energy, nuclear or otherwise, in mm-hmm. this flick. Yeah. Well, that, that's mostly what I'm excited for. That rounds off my list. How about you guys? I still have I a couple. I still have mm. a couple. Maybe just I'm gonna run through it really quick. Little Mermaid. Oh right. In uh, May, I think. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. May. I have uh, ish- so. So. I have- what are your? All issues? right. My yeah, issues, issues about live action Disney movies is that they're live action Disney movies. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my issue. So I'm not really excited. If it's good, it's good. Great, I'll watch it. But if it's another Lion King. Mulan or, or whatever <laughs> oh disappointment God. live action Disney movies Disney will come up with then okay well ha- Halle Bailey looks Aladdin really... <laughs> Aladdin was so bad Halle Bailey looks pretty promising so far we've seen previews of her singing um, under the not under the sea <laughs> no wait <laughs> well, well, she is well, under the sea well, she she is is under the that's sea. a totally different song hold on part of your world I meant part of your world no she did not sing Sebastian's song but I do want to yes. hear Sebastian's song and who the hell will be playing Sebastian but either way um, yeah fuck the racists I hope this does well Mm-hmm. Uh, for sure. They always have a penchant for casting really great singers. Mm-hmm. It's just like sometimes. <laughs> just... Emma Watson, really. <laughs> <Joke lang. laughs> yeah, but yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, okay, I know. Fine, fine. We, have, I hope we it... have a bad track record of live action Disney movies, yeah, TBH. Except for a few. Uh, Cinderella, Cinderella was Cinderella. nice. Um, Jungle but... Book was also nice. But yeah, I hope that's this. It. Yeah, this change. This <laughs> that, is that, hopefully in the good spectrum. Ooh, ooh, we missed the cartoon. We missed the cartoon. What? Fast X. Cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking a. Could be a cartoon. It is cartoony. I mean, it's the last, um, last fast movie, right? And no a part. No, it's not. No, they're gonna do ten and eleven, and they said that's gonna be the last one. Oh, uh, okay. Na no, they didn't. They, they 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 went with an odd number. They could have evened it out with twelve. But okay. Yeah, but you know, Jason Momoa was in this one. Oh. 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 So. Oh. <laughs> I mean, so easy, it's fast. It's just... No, it's the fast franchise, with or without Jason Momoa. I'm fucking watching it. Who cares? Yes, because it's all about family. <laughs> uh, who fucking cares we're still watching oh, it man. and we can't wait to see how much more ridiculous it's gonna get I mean who can top spaceships at this point anyway mm. what are they gonna do now space car ships <laughs> what are Technically, they gonna they do they already went into space they already bungee jumped they already leapt between skyscrapers what oh I know, I know I know they all ran a plane the only way for them to top ooh this is they- Dang's got a good one they could do trouble. cars in the multiverse Time travel, that's what I want. Multiverse. Was saying. Uh, There's a universe where Vin travel. Diesel no, 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 has no, no, long no. hair. Time travel, oh. Muna. Time Wait. travel, Muna. Tapos, multiverse. Those are the. Time last. travel Ooh. first. Yes. Time yeah, travel. Mayi's got it. Yes. yes. <laughs> wait, wait. And then he travels back in time where he was still breakdancing. Oh hair. my God. And then he teams up with Triple X. Oh my like, God. What uh, the fuck? Ice Cube? Ice Cube, Triple X? Oh my God. Not Ice Cube, Triple X. Nobody likes Ice Cube, Triple X. Okay, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm and just then curious. they are rescued by um, Pitch Black. Oh my god. Riddick? Yes. Uh, we gotta chronicle that, that then. That, that sounds ridiculous. Ah. But anyway, I think that's a good roundup. <laughs> I think that, that rounds off everything. That rounds off our lists. Uh, I think so, yes. Before this gets any crazier, that in general is a good um, preview of what we can expect for the following year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there are going to be some surprises that are going to be coming out that we missed out. 
Let's hope there are more better there are more better movies this year than there were last year. Mm-hmm. And hopefully we can enjoy them from the safety of our cinemas or at home. Either way, we have the choice. So yeah, let us know if there are any movies that we missed that you are looking forward to. You can always sound off on our social media pages. We've got the Facebook group. Sabatours, we like movies. Just join their group. We have some discussions and news over there. And also there's Instagram at Sabatours Podcast. And um, also you can let us know which of these titles we've already mentioned that you want to hear a full episode of. And yeah, so that's our social media at uh, Subatorius Podcast and the group I already mentioned. Yeah, hey. So yeah, in general, you can find us at Subatorius Podcast. Will we have a TikTok soon? I don't know. We shall see. <laughs> Will we, fellas? Hmm. We're not dancing. Hmm. I'm not dancing. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe we'll Will see. Will we? Will we? Let us know as well. But yeah, that's it for our 2023 watch list. Hooray! How about one where Groot is do- driving a Dodge oh my Charger? God, there. <laughs> Let it go, Misha. <laughs> Iron Giant. Oh. Iron Giant comes in. <laughs> oh, God. And they jump the car off at the back of Iron Giant's oh, head. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Yep, and then they start playing Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, yes. Because you know, him the Dungeons and Dragons is also gonna be a movie. And then their DM can be Riddick. That might be ridiculous. Oh, I already said uh, that joke. Uh, yeah, credits to Mai. Yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah, that's yes. we're the Saboteurs. My name's Mai. I'm Misha. And I'm Aja. Woohoo! Happy New Year! Yeah, we, we we claimed our own names this time. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.